Three umpires walk into a bar and start talking about how they make their balls and strikes calls. The first umpire says, I call them as I see them. The second, I call them as they are. And the third, they ain't nothing till I call them. So who's right? Well, for that, we have to consult these three speech umpires. On the left is British philosopher J.L. Austin. In the middle is American philosopher John Searle. And on the right is Chilean engineer, entrepreneur, senator, uh, and philosopher Fernando Flores. The three of them studied something that we now call speech act theory, which is the study of words that not only convey information, but also perform actions as well. Hi, this is Jeff Goldfinger. This is the fifth episode of the STEM Signal Channel, where we help the STEM educated increase their career signal above the workplace noise. Now, let's get down to business. Okay, most of you know about the periodic table of elements without which life would not be possible. Well, Fernando Flores talked about his periodic table of speech acts, six very specific words without which conversations for action in the workplace wouldn't happen. In part one of this three-part series, we talked about two of the speech acts, assertions and assessments. Today, in part two, we're going to be talking about declarations. So let's do a quick review of assertions and assessments. In the description, you'll see a link to that episode. I would highly encourage you to watch it. All right, so what is an assertion? First of all, an assertion can also be treated as a fact. We say assertion or fact, it's the same word. Has three characteristics. The first one is universal acceptance of the meaning of the words. So let's use an example. This car gets 42 miles to the gallon. Okay, if we all agree about the meaning of the word gallon and miles and car, then now we have the first characteristic. But we also have to have near universal societal agreement of the facts. So, for example, we now treat as a fact the earth goes or orbits around the sun. That wasn't always the true fact, right? For a long time, we had near universal agreement that uh, the sun went around the earth, okay? So when I say near universal, for example, there are still some flat earthers, okay? That's fine uh, for them, uh, but we have near universal agreement that the earth is round. That's what we mean by that, okay? All right, so if those first two attributes are met, then the third one is any independent, disinterested third party can actually review your claim to find out if it's truthful, sincere. If you're lying, then you're a jerk. Or if you have no care for the truth, then you're a bullshit. Okay, those aren't my words. That comes from Professor Emeritus Harry Frankfurt in his book called On Bullshit. I talked more about this in the earlier episode. Again, uh, you can find that link in the description. All right, so in the case of the miles per gallon, I can ask my neighbor to go out, drive my car around a track. Uh, he can uh, measure the, the gas that's consumed, etc., and we can figure out whether that assertion of fact is true, false, or BS. Okay, all right, so that's assertion. Assessment, very quickly, the characteristics of an assessment, it's neither true nor false. And primarily because we don't have a universal definition. So for example, if I were to say, I have the best YouTube channel in existence. Well, we don't have agreement on what best is in the case of YouTube channels. Is it best by revenue it generates, by views, by number of comments, by the quality of the content? So because there's no universal definition, it can't be either true or false. Rather, it's grounded or ungrounded. So I can use those attributes, those assertive attributes, to decide whether I'm grounding my claim that it's best. And clearly, this being only my fifth episode, um, I might think it's the best, but I don't have grounding for it. Okay, So I might speculate and say I have an ungrounded claim that my channel is the best. All right, but why would somebody even say that? The purpose of an assessment is to notice the past in order to predict the future. So the example I like to use is if I'm going to the airport, I live in Spain, in Valencia. So somebody says to me, hey, uh, the security line at Valencia is really short. You only need to get to the airport about 15 minutes prior. Okay, great. They notice the past in order to predict the future for a helpful purpose. 
If somebody's opining about the security line at, in Amsterdam at Schiphol Airport, for example, that doesn't help me, right? So that's opining for the sake of opining. Don't do that, right? Assessments should be helpful. And they're always domain specific, okay? So again, more about all of these in part one uh, episode. The link is in the description. So today, let's focus our attention on declarations and the two types, verdictive and operative. At a philosophical level, what our speech act theorists say is that a declaration changes your reality. So let's talk about what we mean by how to change your reality. So one example is a verdictive declaration given by someone in a position of authority. Think about a judge on the bench declaring a verdict of guilty or not guilty. Or in the case of my cousin Vinny, Mr. Trotter, the state like dismiss all charges. Yes. The prosecutor had the authority to drop the charges. That's a drop the charges is a verdictive declaration. Okay. Uh, Alice Cooper famously uh, sang his song Schools Out for Summer. That's a verdictive declaration, usually made by the principal or the authority at the school saying, okay, you don't have to come to school for the next few weeks. Uh, at the company level in business, a, an authority like the ISO organization can certify your company as ISO certified. That's a verdictive declaration. Okay. Uh, the most common type of verdict, de de verdictive declaration is, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Uh, this happens to be my lovely wife and myself about, oh, don't tell her I forgot this, maybe 12, 13 years ago. That type of, I now pronounce you husband and wife, again, there's no universal truth to that. There are many different types of marriages, right? There's straight marriage, gay marriage, common law marriage, polyamorous, monogamous, polygamous marriage. So because we don't have any universal definition, it's just a declaration, such as the one made, I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry, uh, shout out to my cousin Shelby, who happened to be the daughter in the movie. True story, you can look her up. All right, so why do I talk about these declarations as neither true nor false, nor grounded or ungrounded? So what is the characteristic of a declaration? Well, these declarations come with vows. So there's no way to know as a truthful fact whether my wife and I are married unless you observe, are we living up to the vows that we made to each other? Here's an example. This is from the movie uh, Five to Seven. Uh, Anton Yelchin plays a young journalist trying to make his way in the world, and he strikes up a uh, an adulterous affair with the wife of a French diplomat stationed at the United Nations in New York. The reason the movie is called Five to Seven is because that couple agrees that they're allowed to have adulterous affairs, but only if each party knows about it and only between the hours of 5 to 7 p.m. Now, that's not the vows my wife and I made, but these are the vows that this couple makes. So every declaration has a set of vows that come with it. In business, that's usually defined, for example, as a teaming agreement, as is the case here between Cessna and FedEx, where they renewed their vows to develop a follow-on to the Cessna 208, which is now the 408 Sky Courier. This, this article came out in 2017. I believe the Sky Courier, the, the new one, the 408, has actually had its first flight. You can, you can look that up. All right, so that concludes the discussion on verdictive declarations. The other type of change in reality is called an operative declaration. So in an operative declaration, we change your reality by, for example, creating a new title, right? In the old days, alchemists, pictured here from the Harry Potter library, Antoine Lavoisier came along in 1783 and we declared alchemy out, chemistry in. So that became an operative new title that came with some vows. What is the vows of a chemist? The vows of a chemist were to prove that nothing is lost, nothing is created, just transformed. Here's another uh, operative uh, declaration. I went to my uh, dermatologist for my annual cancer screening on my skin, and I, I, I don't have any cancer. I just do that as an annual practice to get checked. Anyway, I looked over on the wall and there's the Hyfricare 2000. 
wow, my dermatologist has a Hyfricator 2000, whatever that is. Uh, so how do we know what it does? What are its vows? Where do we find the vows for a new product that's out on the street? We find them in the product and data sheets, with marketing pamphlets, the website, right? So we, we look at electric vehicles out there right now, right? We have uh, everybody's defining the range of their electric vehicle as a main vow that they describe in the quality of their vehicle. So this is how we describe what are called operative declarations, the Hyfricator 2000. So any product that your company produces, it's a declaration that your customer doesn't know anything about until you describe its vows. Here's a description of a progressive traditional Jersey diner. This happens to be up in um, uh, near Parsippany in, in North Jersey off of uh, Route 15. And I saw this sign, I said, you don't normally see progressive traditional in the same sentence. So what do those vows mean? That's an operative declaration. We had to go inside to read it in their menu. It's not actually printed out on the front. Here's a really uh, creative operative declaration. This is in Virginia on the highway between where I used to live and, and going to the uh, caverns, Lou Ray Cavern in West Virginia. Antique tables made daily. There's an operative declaration. What do they mean by that? What are their vows? Well, I come to learn that their vow is they make tables with such great quality that a hundred years from now, you'll look back on and say, that's a great antique that stood the test of time. Here's another operative declaration, Selfie Studios, also in New Jersey. A selfie studio? Do you need to go to a studio to take a selfie? Interesting vows, not really meant for business. And sorry to say, they went out of business. So you can see when your vows don't match the common understanding, you have an incongruity in the marketplace. Okay, so that concludes the first three of the speech acts. We're gonna cover the next one in the final part three of this. I would encourage you to view part one if you haven't seen it already, and that'll be in the description. Getting back to our umpires, we now know how to describe their speech acts. The first one is an assessment. It's his opinion as how he sees them. The second one declares as an assertion of fact that he calls them as they are. And our third one makes a verdictive declaration that they're nothing until he calls them. He changes their reality. Okay, so finishing up the lesson, again, another homework assignment if you would agree to take it on. Please notice assertions, assessments, and declarations all around you in business meetings, in your product data sheets, etc., websites. The more you practice learning how to notice and observe these, the more you will be capable of using them in a powerful way at work to increase your STEM signal. Okay, so thank you again for tuning into the channel. It is new, so your comments are welcome. Uh, what you liked, what topics you would like to cover, what you didn't like, what I can do better. Uh, if you did like, please hit the like button and subscribe. But truthfully, if you actually forward this to others, if you use your networks to actually promote this, don't let the, al I mean, okay, let the algorithm do what the algorithm's gonna do, but you're gonna increase your STEM signal by being more humanistic in the way you get the word out on this channel. So if you like this, if you found it powerful, refer this to one of your friends or colleagues. In other words, as that great sage Jerry Maguire says, help me help you. Okay, thank you again. This is Jeff Goldfinger. And until next time, keep your STEM signal above the noise. Let's get